Hey everyone, this is episode 34, uh, also episode 3 of Road to Freaks. So in this one, we had just come off of re-watching all the, all the different footage we did for the short that we made 11 years ago, and uh, still felt like we had some creative juices flowing, so we continued um, getting ideas for the actual structure of the, of the, the movie we're working on. So what we did is we used uh, Dan Harmon's for, like monomyth story circle, which is a a um, uh, the hero's journey. It's like a an expansion on the hero's journey, and we did that for the three main characters as well as the group as a whole. And oh, and we got some tonal stuff. So we we started going through different bits of media that we thought would be good to kind of reference for how we want things to. Look, sound, feel, that sort of stuff. Still a long way to go, but uh, it felt really productive. I, I'm really liking how everything's shaking up, and I hope you guys do too. So enjoy. You know what I do? I count. I do one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Like that's how instead of counting to 30 or singing happy birthday, it just makes it a lot easier for me. And then I, I just, just break it in five i just never go anywhere and then i never have to wash my hands you don't wash your hands when you go to the bathroom why would i do that it's my yikes. penis yikes i know where it's been <laughs> i know where it's been it's fine In my pants hello everyone oh hey what's going on what's up guys we're back and doing a podcast road to freaks number three woo cheers ah. oh. so if, if you want to do the intro that. again Oh, yeah, let's drink to that. Cheers, some lachach. An off-brand lachach. Um, so, we are, this is a continuation, and this is kind of fresh off of watching, uh, at least for me, 10 years or 11 years, and then Josh, six years of seeing our original short that we made back in high school. Uh, that's just... I think that episode is just going to be fun for me to watch, for you to <laughs> yeah. watch of us. Um, but I think tonight or for this session, we should really concentrate on what we want the A plot of the short to be and the B plot of the short. Because, okay. uh, you know, most things have an A main story and then maybe like a side plot. Um, <clears throat> and I'm thinking the, because we talked about it, that the main plot should either be growing up and reconnect. I think it, I think they could be both. I think reconnecting and growing up could be the same thing, like together, like it could be still a main plot together. Yeah. I think of it as um, <clears throat> like there's, they've definitely grown up in some ways, but it's been grow, growing up separately and kind of in parallel. Yeah. Um, what we had talked about, I think at the end of episode two, was that at this point in the characters' lives, they, they play D&D &D together to stay in touch, but it's only once a month. And mm -hmm. it's very, what's the word? Uh, medical? Sterile? Yeah. Like, the, like they play, but they're not like joking around. They don't know what's going on in, in each other's lives. Yeah. So they've grown up, but they haven't grown up together. And I think that what this the A plot can be is them reconnecting and growing even more because they're they're growing as a unit yeah um and then i was thinking the b plot because i wanted to have this involved anyway is either i want the b plot to be them trying to come up with either i don't know if it's either going to be the prank or that'll be a throwaway thing or the b plot is cooper's um job situation because eventually because we kind of discussed while driving <clears throat> excuse me in episode one that most likely at the end of this maybe cooper finds the confidence to do a startup and in doing so like either xander and skylar jump both jump on board or one or the other jumps on board um that's what i would think the the b plot could attest to like did, you, did we talk about that I I think so. I think we did. I don't I'm know if we sure did, we... but I like it. I, yeah. I like I don't remember it. It feels novel, but I like it as an idea. Yeah. So Cooper's job situation and with starting 
a start up fellas join hopefully my typing isn't super loud uh it doesn't sound too loud to me okay yeah so, I, I like that because it's it yeah. the b plot then reinforces <clears throat> the a plot as well right it's not like a uh i don't know why the only thing i could think of is like on like cheesy road trip movies like rv and the the most recent national lampoon they did like there's always a b plot where it's like the geeky teenage boy finds a girl in the other car and she th he thinks he's super cute like, yeah i don't want to do a redundant kind of b plot i don't want to do a plot where it's like and cooper finds love yeah like, i don't i don't think we need a, a romance in this no one. This is this is a bromance. It's a bromance. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so, I think yeah, I think that'll that's really good. So, a plot. <clears throat> how can we kind of flesh out this this movie? Like, let me, I'm gonna. I'm see thinking uh, Dan Harmon's story structure. Dan Harmon story circle. There we go. Have you have you looked at that before? Uh, I've seen the South Park one. I think I've seen the Dan Harmon one. Um, um, do, do, do. Let me see if I can send you a link in here. Yeah. So I'm also looking a short film. Is any film not long enough to be considered a feature? Um, so a short film has a running time of 40 minutes or less. Okay, cool. So I think we could stretch it to the 40. You want to do 40? I would like to do 40. Cool. Okay, so click on the thing I sent you. Oh, yes, yes. I, I saw that. So the zone of comfort, like, I guess we can go through with all of them and then also them as a group. Okay. So um, the zone of comfort would be <clears throat> digitally hanging out once a month, like not really getting to know each other very well. Yeah. Um, but they want something. They want to be closer. Or they realize they want to be closer because of Quentin. Um, so they enter the unfamiliar situation, which is them on the road trip or camping trip. They adapt to it. They become closer. But what heavy price would they pay? Um, I think it's uh, the heavy price they would pay is maybe the, uh, I don't want to say the murder, but the destruction of maybe their childhood and the rose-tinted glasses that they had or the nostalgic kind of feeling that they had for it. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, so then it has to end with them. They return to their familiar situation. I mean, as a group, we want it to end in the sand pit, right? The sand. Yeah. But they have to have changed. I think it can be for the better. That or the um, the pay for heavy price or, you know, a big moment should happen in the sand pit. It doesn't have to end in the sand pit. It can end with, you know, them in an office starting the, the job or <clears throat> something in that regard. But, uh, I, yeah, I want to I do want the sand pit at some point. Um, I'm, I'm just writing out the uh, the formula real quick. Okay. Um, sand pit at some point. Uh, stop typing for one second. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you're trying to add stuff ahead of me? Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing, but just, just like set it up for uh, the the guys as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is so much more structured than we went about it the first time. Yeah. Well, we were also 17 and 18 when we did the first one. Uh, no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not bad. And oh, hold on. I don't know. I think a lot of it is I've, I've been watching community a lot lately, but it, yeah, me too. 
it's really just reminding me how much I, I loved it and I've always loved that show. Yeah. And I think uh, using Dan Harmon's format is a good idea. And I also want to have an end tag. <laughs> okay. I don't know uh, what it would be. But. Just for clarification, Josh, is you're on what, episode eight of Community? No, no, I'm on like episode 19 now. Episode 19. I have finished all six seasons of Community since they added it on Netflix on April 1st. It, it is, is April 4th. 4th. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did have time to work and sleep at the same time uh, all while doing that. So I just finished it. I want to say it's 1140 right now. I finished it at about seven. <laughs> and I felt good. I felt good at the end of it. Um Yeah. Okay, adapt to the hijinks of being on the trip, become closer. What do you mean by they become closer but at the possible cost of their friendship? I think uh, because we talked about it, them venting and uh, them having the that kind of aha moment of... Oh, I just lost you. No audio. Yeah. Justin has a splitter for his computer, and sometimes it doesn't work very good. Maybe you're back. You're incredibly quiet. I don't know why. Uh, uh, just talk while I, while I fix no, this. Oh, yeah, I think you're on the wrong mic again. No, it's on Blue Snowball. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Just keep it there. Uh, okay, so you you mean like they're gonna the they're, they're gonna vent stuff out? Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I think it should go to. Um, because <clears throat> we we talked about it and we discussed it like Xander not really inquiring about the divorce only because he doesn't know how to process that himself. Um, just kind of mundane things of Cooper leaving and uh, Xander feeling that sense of abandonment. I think uh, we could talk about Skyler and his uh, self-reliance and that, you know, maybe Xander and Cooper were too busy with their own shit that we completely just neglected him altogether. Um, okay. Just like a reason that there would be a conflict. We need to figure out a conflict with, I think, everyone. Because if it's just like three bros just hanging out, then it's not really a a thing. Yeah, I think that makes sense because that that is one plot point that we we had for Cooper was that yeah. he went through a divorce. So I have returned to their personal lives. Did you mean personal or professional? Professional, sorry. Having changed, and then the eighth one is they have changed. What if the last the last shot is a uh, like a conference call? Yeah. Instead of D and D, it's still a digital call, but it's them working on something together. Oh, I like that. Sweet. So if they're gonna start a company, we'll have to figure out what that company is. Well, we already have IT and we have the streaming. So what could Xander be doing professionally that would bring him to be able to work on it? Maybe finance? Only you, want to start a fi- you want to start a fine tech company? No. like <clears throat> I think it should be something that's very in the channel of, yes, there's a destruction of their childhood, but that doesn't mean they're, that they're, they're, you know, that imagination is dead. So maybe either they're developing a game or uh, a platform, something like that. Hmm. What do you think? I'm trying to think of something that was in the original script that we could play off of. Cow Kicker 2000? <laughs> Cow Kicker 2000. I mean, if it depends who takes the helm. Because if it's if it's Xander who brings it up, it could be like an animal activist group. If Cooper brings it up, I don't know what Cooper, what does Cooper want? 
Chelsea. Happiness. Happiness, but I guess that's part of his uh, his story is, is defining what that happiness is. Right. But So what happened in, in the plot? We hung out. There was a cherry bomb. There weren't there weren't deeper wants or needs. So I I don't know. I guess we'll have forty minutes to to come up with something. Yeah, because we have to build them from basically the ground up at this point. Yeah, we we really just have names and that they're friends. Yeah, and we have a glimpse of what they were like as kids. Yeah. About new company. Okay, well let's uh let's jump to Cooper's, okay, and get his get his uh eight. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I don't I don't want that to. Fuck. I guess that's just gonna happen. Okay, so Cooper, he's starting out. Comfort zone of comfort. His zone of comfort is remote IT job. Uh. Like, low challenge. Uh, no challenge low challenge well paid unfulfilling but they want something right so outside of the well he's isolated right so he wants to reconnect is that going to be his main focus of um of the shit I, episode because i was pulling up the dan Harmon, but he also has a monolith of kicking the shit out of writer's block that i'm gonna send you okay because i think it might just be helpful in general um because it might just be helpful for the story in general when we get to it Because see how it's organized in order in chaos. Mm -hmm. So I think when we sorry when we get to the the, the plot point, I think we should uh, reference that. But yes, let's let's focus. Sorry, back on on. Cooper's no, you're box. good. Okay, so, so let me open that back up. So he wants something. He wants. I feel like his main want is wanting to reconnect. He's just bored. He wants to not be bored. Okay. So he wants happiness, not be bored. Um, yeah. Unfamiliar situation. Interacting with people again. Well, long lost, okay. not even long lost friends. Interacting with friends in person again. Like opening himself up because he was okay. kind of wrecked from the, right. the uh, divorce. <clears throat> Which is understandable. <laughs> yep. Uh, four, they adapt to it. So adapts. Five, they get what they wanted, pay a heavy price. Maybe he should lose his job. Oh, okay. Like he's 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 war he's out of vacation days and he's warned to not go on this trip, but he wants to because he's bored as fuck. So he yeah. goes, but then he gets fired. Okay. How about uh, you pretend you're sick? Yeah. And then that can be a reoccurring thing every time you're checked up on. Like me and Skylar are like doing something, or you know we're in the middle of our prank or whatever, and there's a big explosion behind you. Like <laughs> I got that COVID. <laughs> Hit the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back in re back to normalcy. He's back at home with his savings, but no job. And then having changed, starting whatever company. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I will let you type for Skyler. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let me go here. So, Skyler. 
Um, comfort zone is and streaming. Is he living on his own, or was he still living with his grandma, or did she grandma, die? I think we talked about her, his grandmother passing. Right, so and that and that can be the thing that we kind of neglected because yeah. let's say it's around the same time as Cooper's divorce. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to add that uh, after his grandma died around the time of Cooper's divorce. That's someone. I think Skylar's want is to want someone who's actually going to be concerned about him because in his reality, he's this kind of figure. And he doesn't have anything outside of that bubble because, you know, when you self-isolate, especially now, you know, going through it, when you self-isolate and you're focusing on one kind of thing, you don't have, if you're living by yourself, I would think, you don't have mm -hmm. someone who's like checking in on you, taking care of you. Like Skylar at this point is very, I would say, self-independent. So his want is he wants someone or, you know, he assumed his friends are people that deeply care about him. So wanting someone to maybe care about him. I think that, and if we make him semi-successful, then he also has, he'll have like, he'll have a horde of people who pretend or think they know him yes. and he just wants to be known. Okay. Wants to be known. Wants a genuine connection. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Genuine connection. Okay. Uh, enter unfamiliar situation. We should... Um, just because I, th I feel like we'll forget, I'm going to add to that. Um, okay. Wants a genuine connection. <clears throat> Only connection is through fans who think they know him. So, okay. Unfamiliar uh, territory. Unfamiliar territory would be, I think, uh, the camping and away from technology and his fans. What if he's uh, what if he tries to stream, like live stream the entire mm -hmm. thing, and then his phone breaks or Xander breaks it? That could yeah. start the uh, the tension. Okay. Okay. Uh... And that could be um, that could kind of tie into him wanting a genuine connection, where because he's not streaming like he let in this in this scenario let's say he's been streaming non-stop for the past i don't know year two years yeah. and he just stops for some reason then people start checking in on him yeah like when he gets back after five days or whatever it is yeah okay uh adapts to it uh yeah i guess adapt starts living in the moment Um, they get what they wanted for their own sake, not just for content. I guess so, some of this is a little uh, bad for the podcast, just because I'm I'm not fully saying what I'm typing out. But right. That's uh, fine. At the end, get, we'll, we'll read over it. Okay. Get genuine interaction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, pay heavy price, so. Either clout or his comfort zone. Hold on, I want to put for general interaction possible argument with. I'll fix it. With the boys. Um, so he either loses his clout or like uh. When I was dating or when I was with my ex and she was in her business, um, when she was saying that, you know, she was getting tired or she didn't want to do it. I'm like, oh, why don't you take like a month or so off? She would say, you don't understand if you stop doing it, you stop being relevant. 
So maybe these five days he complete he becomes less relevant than he was before. That would be the heavy price. Like we could do that. I don't think it's realistic. Depending okay. on how big like I've seen people leave for a little bit and then when people come back, they're more excited. Right. Depending on what level of fame he has, too. Right. So that is an option though. So eh, put it down. You have you have it down. So clout right. or maybe he he realizes how burned out he is and he no longer wants to do it. So he's now directionless. Okay. Uh, return to the familiar situation. Returns. Mm-hmm. Returns to streaming life. But he's unsatisfied. I don't know how to spell satisfied. <laughs> it should fix it for you. Um, and then having changed. Finds passion in creating. Whatever his um, new job in the company is, it should be something that isn't visible. Okay. Because he it could be. He's, it, go ahead. I was going to say it could be like uh, what Mike's doing now for junk drawer, which is social media. But that's, I mean, it could. That's still being seen, though, isn't it? It allows him to interact, but it doesn't. He's not the face of the company. He's not a figure. True. Okay. You know? Yeah, write it down. <clears throat> um, so for Xander, I don't know what Xander's doing. Like, I don't know what his... Uh, what his job title is. Like, I know he's a corporate. We want him, I want him to be a pencil pusher, but I don't know what I can make him that could tie back to the end. Accounting? I mean, yeah, accounting could work. I feel like it's a pretty, like it's a well-paying job because everyone has to be somewhat well-paid or very flexible to, like they need money to be able to just up and do this thing yeah. that they're about to do. Okay. So, accountant. Um, doing something well paying, but. So less. Corporate. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not like he's an accountant for something he cares about. Right. Two L's, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Um. So they want something. I think the want is to to either feel like because uh, we talked about him and his uh, arc or his uh, mini arc was uh, individual being an individual again. Because when you're in a corporate job, like you have like you know you have three items on a desk you're allowed to have, and you know you can't really express yourself or you know you don't really have a voice anymore when you're just kind of like a drum so would you see would you say that's accurate wanting to feel like an individual like what he does matters yeah okay uh enter an unfamiliar situation um maybe he's in charge because he's been he's been Let's say he didn't go to college. Okay. Because I think you can still get your accounting stuff without going to college. Yeah. As long as you pass the test. Because my, my dad didn't go to school for it, but he's he was a an accountant. So maybe he has been an accountant for the past eight years, has uh-huh. always just been told what to do, not had to think of like what he, – he hasn't had to make decisions. Yeah. And now that's his unfamiliar situation. He's kind of in charge. Okay. 
Um, get what they wanted. So, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Adapt to it. So, he's able to, you know, direct through the, um, the hardships, the hardships of uh, leading. And then eventually, because uh, what I liked in the in the short is the even though it was very little, it was the tiny detail about not touching people. Mm-hmm. But instead of that, it's emotionally like that. I think is a big catalyst for most of that, which is he doesn't know how to process other people's emotions because he doesn't know how to process his own. So through the leadership role, he can adapt to that and his. Uh, that kind of feeling. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So he had, he adapts as a leader to having empathy. Okay. Um, but at a great heavy price, which is, I would think, um, I mean, I think through the course of it, he should constantly try to lead and then either he messes up or he neglects to think about something or how someone feels about it. So I would think the heavy price would be possibly sabotaging and self-sabotaging. My two thoughts on it are either he makes at a critical point, he makes a decision and it's the wrong one and it causes whatever situation they're in to get worse. Okay. Um, Either that or he has the realization by developing empathy that he's been kind of a shitty friend for the past, let's say, five years. I think, that's, a, that's a pretty heavy price. I think the shitty friend, yeah. Let's do the, the shitty friend. We could also do the mistake as well. That can come go hand in hand. Okay. Yeah, so both of those. Yeah. So, big... Mistake. Shitty friend. Uh, return to their familiar situation. Fun. Oh, we did we skip uh, get what they wanted? Yeah. Which I feel like is just self-explanatory. Yeah, I think at some point we'll have to like go through and say how he gets that but which makes their situation worse slash realizes he's been a shitty friend for a while uh okay return to their familiar situation so back as a corporate drone and maybe he's defiant and quits. Yeah, I think he should quit. And I think I, with the the layout we have now, I think Xander needs to be in charge of the company because and, we're of the of the com- whatever company the three of them make. Oh, okay. Because we're positioning him as is learning to have empathy, which is incredibly important with uh, leaders. And he's going to make a huge mistake, but then that gives the opportunity for the other two to say, hey, even though you messed up, we still want to follow you. We trust you more than anyone else. Okay. And, and with what he, with uh, number two, wanting to feel like an individual and like what he does matters. Yeah. If the company is based around something that he wants, he'll feel that. Got it. So, leader of startup. Yeah. So then I think for going back to Cooper, whatever his job is, um, job in company is challenging. Like maybe he's doing, 
I don't know, product development, something that takes a lot of critical thinking. You have to dive deep in. You can't just half-ass it, you know, like he's been doing with his IT support job. Yeah. Um, I think they also have to, I'm going to put it up here, come to the realization that they cannot drop their lives. I'm going to put in quotes lives for each other, which is in the regard of like, I, I love the idea of starting it with a video conference and ending it with a video conference. What I mean by that is like probably during, you know, one of the, the conversations or arguments, it's like, what are we going to do? Just live together again. We're going to live at an apartment. I can't do that. Like I have this or I have that and that's unrealistic. So I mm -hmm. think um, that would go hand in hand with the, the destruction of childhood. Yeah. Realizing that they, they have to move on. Yeah. And that they can't go back. Exactly. Which is exactly what the circle says. Okay. Cool. So um, I really have to go to the bathroom. So if you want to read through the, the sure. circles for all four. Cool. Be right back. Okay. Yeah. So while Josh goes to the restroom, uh, we'll go through the Dan Harmon, Rick and Morty style um, diagram. You could do this as well uh, when you're home, if you're writing something or, you know, whether it be a book, a play. This is a pretty cool uh, way of looking at things. So we'll go with the uh, characters first, and then I'm going to do the overarching plot. So, <clears throat> so for Cooper... They're in their comfort zone. Uh, so Cooper is in a remote IT job, which is a low challenge, well-paid, unfulfilling, but not entirely exciting uh, job. So the second uh, is the they want something, which is he wants to be happy. He wants to be challenged. He doesn't want to be bored anymore. He wants to move past his divorce. Uh, three. They enter an unfamiliar situation, which would be interacting with friends and purpose. Uh, people again, uh, opening himself up emotionally, um, letting down the wall. So four, we have adapting to it. So I'm going to guess there's probably going to be a lot of growing pains of trying to express himself. And then you, maybe one of the other characters shoots him down. Uh, we need a catalyst to that. So eventually um, gets what he wants. Uh, so they become close friends again. Uh, the heavy price for him is he loses his job because he pretends to be sick and he abuses kind of the, the sick motif. Um, <clears throat> so seven returns to their familiar situation, which he's back at home with his savings, but he doesn't still have his position. And then having changed, uh, he starts to start up with the other two boys and uh, his job in the company is challenging and it fulfills that need of not to be bored. Um, I'm going to talk a lot, apparently. Uh, so I'll move to... Do you want me to read the next P. one? Yeah, you can read the next one. So I was doing okay. characters first, and then I'm going to do... I was going to do the over arc. Okay. So go with Skylar. So Skylar starts out that he's living alone. He's by himself, and all he does is try to build up his streaming like persona. Um, his grandmother died, so this is his only focus. I'm Let's say she probably left him money, and that's how he's funding everything. Um... He wants a genuine connection because the only connection that he's been getting is the digital connection with people who watch him and, and feel like they know him, but but just know like what he puts on. So what's the next step in the circle? Through unfamiliar. Uh, yeah. So the unfamiliar situation is him camping, him being away from technology. Maybe his phone breaks. Maybe there's no internet. I feel like inter no internet is a little too like cliche. Yeah. Um, so he starts living in the moment and actually connecting with with his friends who he's not really been close with for a while. Um, so so that's what he gets his, his genuine interaction and then so heavy price. His heavy price would be either he loses all clout or he realizes that he hates streaming. He hates being the center of attention all the time and he's just been doing it because of habit. Mm -hmm. um, so he returns to the streaming life, but he's just not, he's not about it. So then <clears throat> he, 
either either he can either he pivots it into whatever the company is or he just totally quits. I think it'd be a good idea if so that the company starts out successful or at least with some sort of nugget, the, all the fans that he's created follow mm-hmm. to the company. Yeah, I like that. So, um, okay. Oops, let me write that. Fans built through career follow to company. Okay, so Xander. Uh, Xander is, so his comfort zone is he's an accountant. Uh, anything that's doing something well, uh, paying, but it needs to be sor- uh, solus and uh, he needs to come off as a corporate drone. Um, he does want something. He has a need and a want, excuse me, to feel like an individual, uh, like what he does matters. Uh, he enters the unfamiliar situation of having to make decisions for the group, I would say for the first time in 10 years, because in the original short, it looked like he was kind of the ringleader. Mm-hmm. Um, so him kind of tapping into that. So uh, he's adapts to that as a leader, because originally uh, it was him probably as a kid bossing everyone around. And in this regard, you know, there are adults now, so he has to learn empathy. Um he gets what he wants by uh, he leads, but obviously through some growing, growing pains, whether he messes up in little ways or he doesn't grasp the empathy yet, which is going to be him <clears throat> probably trying to boss him around. Um, pay a heavy price. He makes a big mistake leading and leading, which uh, makes their situation worse that they're in or and slash realizing he's been a shitty friend for a while. Um he returns back to his familiar situation, so his work, uh, but he has a new outlook. He's uh, defiant and eventually quits. And then having changed, he would be the leader of the startup, which is, you know, directing and uh, probably accounting. Growing up together, rediscovery. I forgot to add that. I know we talked about uh, rediscovery being a theme. Yes. Uh, so go ahead and do the, uh, the group. Okay. So the group is in a, their familiar situation is, uh, monthly D and D sessions. Um, what's the word like sterile medical. Um, It's in that word clinical clinical, but they feel clinical. Uh, what they want is to prove that they haven't skipped a beat, to reconnect, to be real friends again. Yeah. So to do that, they go for a road trip or a camping trip, and that is their unfamiliar situation. Um, as as people normally do in those in those situations, they kind of revert back to who they were in uh, right. when they were hanging out. So they adapt to that. They become closer but at the cost of realizing that they can't go back to who they were and they have to they have to figure out how to be the 2020 version of themselves but still a unit right uh six yeah that that's the destruction um they can't just drop their lives to go back like they can't just live together again uh they all return to their perfect or their lives but their lives have changed um cooper lost his job skyler hates his job and Xander quits his job. So then they decide to start a new company. They, well, whatever, something that they, they love to do something. They, um, discuss on the trip and they turn it into a company of which Xander is the leader. So I think, I think those are the four, four big circles. Yeah. Um, Let's get some some like tonal references. Tonal references? Yeah, like how we want it to be shot, how we want it to feel. Because we, we're not trying to make a House of Cards drama. But right. we're not trying to make a uh, Shit's Creek. Not Shit's Creek. Um, without a paddle. Like we're not trying to make something yeah. super campy. So, of course, I put down Community. Because it's I think it has a really good blend of tackling... Okay. Real emotional things, but having a lot of levity to it. Um, uh, 
Oh, did number two go away? Where? Sorry, I'm making a list at the bottom. Oh, I, I oh. just went to the next one. Sorry. Oh, that, that's because I made them up, up there. Oh, got okay. it. Your formatting's uh, better. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of... Um, I'm trying to think of shows we watched a lot. Psych comes to mind. Yeah. I mean, Psych is um, probably the more serious episodes of Psych because there's still humor in them. Like anything from the Yang trilogy or... Yeah. I'll, I'll put Psych down. Yeah, but and specify the special, the like, like Yang trilogy, because I think that's that's a good one. Um, I think Futurama um, is too comedic. Yeah. Rick and Morty's too comedic. Scrubs. Scrubs, yeah. Which is the one where Brendan Fraser dies. <laughs> <laughs> just that one that's the only one no there's I think so. uh what uh no yeah you can go i'm sorry i lost it uh i think most of scrubs like seasons three like two and three where they're still figuring everything out i think they're a little more serious um than they are comedy before the side gags kind of take over yeah I would say for Community, like a season five of Community. Oh, really? Yeah. I would have thought one and two. One and two, possibly one. I think two is too goofy. One is too goofy? No, one is one thematically might be good. Uh, Yes, not four. Um, (laughs) But season five for me felt very grounded the minute Troy left. Mm, okay. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. So still a lot of funny moments, but it was it was grounded. Um I would say to an extent workaholics but not okay. slapstick. Just that relationship. Yeah, like the very chemistry driven, like Arrested Development. Too. Yeah, I was gonna say Arrested Development, um, but Arrested Development is also very gag heavy. I wouldn't be against having gags, as long as they're not all slapstick. Yeah. Like I think I just really like the subtle, um, like Mr. F. Yeah. Like it's I don't know the whole thing is based around misunderstanding. <clears throat> Um, uh, Tiger King, obviously. <laughs> Love is Blind. Uh, I got Patrick and Shannon to watch that. That's oh, really? Test. That's yeah, the, the game show, right? Yeah, it's like a reality show on Netflix. It's insane. I haven't finished it. They binged it. <laughs> um, which I feel like mission accomplished. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of... I'm going to start looking through shows um is that i don't even know i I don't watch as much tv as i used to it's a lot of youtube if anything because they're quick yeah you know not the witcher Uh, oh witcher (laughs) um the office more serious episodes i've never really watched the office Oh, really? I never really, I mean, I've never watched The Office. (laughs) I was thinking about that today, actually, while I was setting this up. I'm like, I feel like at this point, I should just wear it as a badge of uh, honor of like, I've never really watched it. I've watched two episodes and I was like, ah, this isn't for me. Yeah. I can respect it. Um, There it is. Good place? A good place? Good place? Mm. You think it's too I think it's too niche um i i really like tonally um there is what i can think of is the way way back which is a uh kind of a coming of age film it had sam rockwell in it and it's about a kid at a summer camp he's a lifeguard at like this 
water park and it's just growing pains through that um and i i just really like the way it was structured uh another one that i like that's a little bit more you know slapsticky like i don't want to say it's like super badass but it's uh it was called uh staten island summer okay and less slapsticky and less like we're gonna get laid but tonally i liked it as far as it had a smaller world kind of feel as opposed to like say like a road trip movie like without a paddle or uh where it feels like this doesn't feel like a real thing like i don't know who these people would be because they're unrelatable right. totally i want them to be like oh i know what someone who's like that or i you know i i got that when i watched staten island summer or I'm, when i watched the way way back okay if that makes sense yeah yeah you want to make sure that they feel like real people not like caricatures yeah like i don't need like a big speech when xander quits like no you listen here <laughs> I've been I've been on a you know a whole trip with my friends and we're gonna have you know what we're gonna start our own business like no one fucking says that they're like you know what yeah. I'm good thank you so much for the opportunity I gotta go yeah and yeah you know, some, yeah very rooted in reality yeah and that's I mean quitting a job is mostly like that and they're like well thank you for you know your time we understand your decision we wish you lots of luck like I don't think there should be any tension with at least on his end when he when he quits. Yeah. Well, I think it should like them not giving a shit will reinforce his choice. Yeah. Cuz he feels like a drone and they're going to be like, "Okay, cool." Yeah. Yeah. Just like clear your desk off for the next guy. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to put the way way back down. Uh, okay. if you I'll haven't have to watch watched that. it. It's a good I like the movie. I haven't watched it in a few years, but I really liked it, on it when I, Ooh, I don't know. I remember either finding it online maybe it was on netflix at one point um also totally i have to see what do you what are you trying to think of i'm trying to like because just because i like his writing style he's a he's a monster person uh and doesn't do anything anymore but i really enjoy his his storytelling it's um max landis oh yeah so if we could do something in the vein of like a uh either me him her or american ultra was a movie he did just you know not maybe stylistically where it doesn't feel like it's this melodrama like if we put it in like that kind of a a uh, tonally a uh, tone format yeah I'll, I'll have to watch it but i'm i'm down with those those uh-huh. options uh so we've done a lot of like com- comedy based things how do you feel about like the beginning of stranger things like a stranger things vibe or yeah like not the supernatural stuff but i feel like the kids felt very relatable like the yeah. relationships all made sense. Um, the, there was there was comedy in it, but it wasn't it wasn't like Scrubs, you know. Yeah. Comedy wasn't the genre; it was the mode, and it would use it in different settings. Yeah. No, I could see that. That's why um, I kind of put Community season five because that's kind of what it feels like. By the time like when the slapstick isn't there, it feels. Like I said, a lot more grounded, but I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to put Stranger Things down. Okay. And then, yeah, let's get one more, and I think that's a good place to, to wrap. Freaks and Geeks. Oh, yeah. Duh. Tried and true. Yeah, Freaks and Geeks. Cool. So we got Community Season 5, not 4, Psych, the Yang Trilogy, Scrubs 2 and 3-ish, Workaholics, but not the slapstick, Arrested Development, uh, kind of just the multi-layered interpretations, the yeah, subtlety, uh, The Way Way Back, 
which I haven't seen, so I don't know how to describe it. So coming of age. Coming of age. Okay. But it's we're not really coming of age in this one. No. We're we're coming well, we're not coming of age in the regard of like we're growing up into Well, kind of actually. We're kind of coming of age. It's kind of a coming of age in a regard in like in a different sense. It's not like like, the, going like entering the next next stage of life. Yeah, I mean we're going we're going to be 30. So that's what I feel like that is kind True. of coming to. Okay. Uh, me, him, her. I don't know that one either. That's just the Max Landis movie. I'm just going to say Max Landis vibe. Uh, okay. Basically, that's just for me because I want to make this script tight. His scripts are very tight. Okay. Uh, Staten, Staten Island Summer? Uh, I want it to be... In Staten Island Summer, like I said, uh, the characters were very real real people uh stranger things i think that also plays into the real people aspect and real people real connections and and um it's like the comedy is just it's it situational but it's not sitcom it's not a it's not kramer busting through the door it's just someone being quirky because that's what their personality is or someone being witty like um what's the guy he's the smart guy he has the girlfriend in season two. Oh, curly uh, hair wait what the, uh, i guess he, he he builds he's the smart one he builds the uh the oh radio. dustin dustin yeah like he's he's super funny but he's not he's not telling jokes yeah you know he's like cracking wise Okay. So that's the kind of like comedy that I'm looking for. And then Freaks yeah. and Geeks. Yeah, the original well. The original well. Cool. Yeah. I think that'll probably be the next thing maybe I rewatch. And I think when we watch these, um, we should sit with a notebook and just write thought, thoughts down. Yeah, I think so too. I'd be down to like uh, do what we did on the we watch or whatever the youtube thing was yeah and just watch them together talk okay. about it yeah whether we record that or not i think just well, i think fun um, to hang out too. each one of us should tackle on one of these like split it five and five and then bring either an episode or like a scene from that well to kind of drive home a point to like okay we yeah yeah does that make sense or we yeah, can just double yeah. up and like we each bring a episode of the community or we each bring a, a piece of site or something like that well, yeah like can, a no i get what you're saying we, we bring an encapsulated segment where we say this is what we're this is the part of the show that we like about and that we like and we want to integrate into what we're making yeah did you did you ever see like a long time ago i wrote a script uh called lady killer which yes yeah, so I, remember that. I made um if i can find it it might be on i i basically you because i got the idea from isaiah isaiah makes visual uh like from his videos he'll make like a thematic clip and mm -hmm. he'll just draw from different things and then make like a, a minute or two minute clip of things uh, of the vibe he's trying to get for. Okay, so like a sizzle reel almost. Yeah, kind of like a sizzle reel. I'm trying to see if I can find it. Just because I really like the, uh, there it is, uh, concept reel. That's what he makes. So, for example, I'm going to send you it that he made for uh, when he made Monsters, which you can watch on Vimeo. Uh, just look up uh, Isaiah Miller on Vimeo. But <clears throat> but you know, from this you could get the these were the vibes that he was trying to get and accomplish with Monsters. There's Drive in it. There's uh, Reservoir Dogs. There's a whole bunch of different things in it. So. If we could arguably make a concept reel as well while we write, I think that can keep us on track for what we're 
looking for, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. we should definitely do that. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think this is this is good. We got a, we got a lot done. We have a lot of structure. We have some takeaways, some actionable stuff. Yeah. I'm pumped, man. Hell yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Like, yeah. comment, subscribe, podcatcher of choice, all that, all that stuff that I'm supposed to say but can't remember, and that's why normally Pat does it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe the Junk Drawer Show. Uh, you can reach us. Uh, at least I'm on Twitter a lot. You can reach me at the Mr. Purple 187. Uh, I'm also working on an independent thing, which I did. I tell you about Mr. Mercury yet? Yeah, yeah, you told me. So wait, I'm, is that is that the the audio bile? Is that what it was yeah, called? Yeah, audio bile. Yeah. So I'm still working on that, but uh, I'm very excited about that. So is your is your um, Twitter the Mr. Purple or Mr. Purple? Ooh, that's a great question. I think it's the Mr. Purple 187. Okay. Hold on, I have to plug. It's my one of the up. two. You can find me. It's, yeah. I have a picture of Ace from Powerpuff Girls as my my logo. <laughs> Um, but yeah, check cool. it out. It's no, it's Mr. Purple 187. It's not the Mr. Purple. So Mr. Purple 187. Uh, Josh is never really on Twitter. No, I don't use Twitter. Uh, I haven't posted to Instagram since I've moved to Colorado. Um, I don't like Facebook. So it's just, really just, like my social media is just the stuff that we put out. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm very much like, hey. Let's talk directly to each other. No, I can't do that. <laughs> no, fuck that. Broadcast. Broadcast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, broadcast. All right. Speaking of broadcast, this one's done. Bye, everyone. Bye.